guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video i have created this flawless everyday makeup base this is just my everyday makeup this is what i do to get the most full coverage flawless dewy skin in this video i share all my tips and tricks to get this flawless full coverage dewy base so i hope you guys enjoy this video <laughs> So before we go into any sort of makeup, I just want to let you guys know that personally I find that skin prep and skincare is what makes my makeup go on flawlessly, which makes it stay hydrated all day, which just makes it look overall better and that it stays like that throughout the day. So it's all down to my skincare and my skin prep and also the techniques that I use to do my makeup, if that makes sense. So first off, I'm just gonna let you know what type of skincare I have on me today. So I have washed my face with a cleansing balm, that is the Alamis Cleansing Balm. And then I put on a serum, I use the Charlotte Tilbury Skin Elixir, is that what it's called? Skin Serum? That one. And then I also have the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. I know they're quite expensive, but any form of skincare that suits your skin is going to work the absolute best for you. So all of the makeup products that I use today are all of my favorite products that I use on a daily basis and that are my go-to products. And first of all, I always start with skin prep. Skin prep is the most important to me. I do two steps for skin prep. I first use a primer and then I use an illuminating product whether that be a glow drop, whether that is a serum, whether that is another primer, I always go in with another illuminating primer. So my first primer is always going to be hydrating and a gripping primer, just so my skin is hydrated even more after my skincare. And then the illuminating primer that I use is just to give my face a bit of a glow. So the first product that I am going to use today is the Milk Hydro Grip primer it is my favorite primer of all time i just think it makes such a difference to your makeup routine if you have dry skin like myself this primer honestly just makes your makeup stay on for the longest time so now that that has been pushed into my skin i then go into an illuminator so the illuminator that i use it's a MAC strobe cream and this is in the shade Gold Light. And it's one of those ones where it doesn't make your face look like a Tin Man because I absolutely hate when makeup products make your skin look like you're the Tin Man. This just gives your skin a really healthy glow and I try it and stick to the high points of my face when I'm using this. So while those products are sinking into my skin, I then like to go onto my brows just because if I go in with my foundation straight away after, my skin isn't going to have absorbed those products before and you might just get a little bit of, what's the word? You might just get a little bit of clinging if the products are still drying into your skin and then you pop on foundation afterwards. So I'm going to give you two options of brow gels and two options of brow pencils that I use just because I do switch between these depending on the day. So the first out of the brow gels is my ultimate favourite which is the Model Co clear brow gel it just looks like this this brow gel is the best brow gel that i've ever used it literally does not move your brows and it does the exact same as soap brows just in a brow gel formula and then the next product that i have is the soap brows now you've probably seen this everywhere i feel like everyone and their mother uses it this brow gel at the beginning i did not get along with i thought it was absolutely useless i was like why do people like this so much i cannot get the hang of it and then I finally learned how to use it. And since then, I have not gone back. I think it is absolutely amazing. But both of these literally do the exact same thing. It just honestly depends on whether I want a really, really fluffy brow, which I will usually go with my soap brows, or I just want a brow gel that will stick my hairs up and make sure they stay. The one that I'm going to use today is the Model Co Brow Gel, just because I have not used it on camera yet. And I just want to show you guys how good that it is. For a lot of people, I feel like they do brow gels afterwards, but I still like to use this the same way I would use the soap brows, which is before my brow pencil. And that's just because I feel like when I use this, I can see the exact structure that I want of my brow. While before, if I don't use this and I go straight in with a brow pencil, I sometimes feel like I'm using so much more product than what's needed. Well, if I go in with this, I can see the shape, I can see where I need to add the brow pencil and then I'm using less brow pencil. So what I do is I literally just use this and stick 
up my brows as if you would with any brow gel. It is as simple as that. Okay, so now that they have dried down, I'm now gonna go into a brow pencil. So I have two options for brow pencils. It honestly depends on my mood once again. So the first one that I have is the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. I feel like everyone uses this. I use mine in the shade 3.5 and I'm actually running out of it. I've got that much left, like the tiniest amount left. And then the other option that I have is the P. Louise Brow Pencil. This is in the shade Hazelnut Latte. This is a lot skinnier pencil than the Benefit one, but it's a little bit darker. So that's why sometimes I don't use this. So depending on if I'm doing a heavy look, I will go in with the P. Louise brow pencil but if I want more of a natural look I will go in with the benefit one even though this one is a little bit darker it still matches my brows and my hair perfectly so both of my brows are now done now that my primers have settled into my skin I'm gonna go into foundation and I feel like you already know what foundation that I'm gonna use of course I'm gonna be using the NARS natural radiant longwear foundation honestly you cannot beat the foundation this is the best foundation in the entire world and I honestly will never ever replace this I do like other foundations and I do sometimes use them but if I want a flawless base and I want it to last and I want it to look super dewy super full coverage then I will always go in with this I have mine in the shade Strom Boli. This is my tan shade. Obviously, I have tan on. So this is where I feel like people differ in techniques. I prefer to use a brush for a more full coverage look. You can use a sponge if you want less coverage. But personally, for me, I prefer to use a brush. So what I like to do is, depending on the day, I will take it on the back of my hand. I will take it on a brush. I will take it straight onto my face. It honestly just depends. So what I'm doing is I am pressing this into my skin. As you can see, the smallest pump ever has covered that whole entire section of my face. Now, I will build this up, but I just want to show you with one layer what this foundation can look like. So it has covered quite a bit. I still have a few blemishes coming through, but it is even out my skin tone and it's just super glowy, which is the exact type of foundation I want. So I always press into my skin just because if you try and buff the foundation in you're just going to be moving it around and what that's going to do is it's not going to give you an even coverage it's not going to give you an even base you're just going to have splotches everywhere so pressing it into the skin is going to even it out and it's also going to make it last longer because you're pushing it into your skin so with one layer on that's what that foundation looks like it's very lightweight it just evens out your skin and gives you a really really nice glow for some people that might be enough coverage personally for me i would like a little bit more just around the bottom half of my face here just because i do have a little bit of spots and blemishes that i want to cover my forehead i don't mind so much about being less coverage i actually prefer it especially because we are going to be going in with cream contour and the cream contour that i use is a concealer so it's already going to be more coverage on my face so i don't mind leaving my forehead as much but for now i am going to just add a little bit more coverage on the bottom half of my face so now that foundation is done i'm gonna go into my concealer and once again you've probably seen this before it is the Too Faced born this way concealer i have mine in the shade porcelain which actually suits me perfectly for tan this concealer is the best concealer ever so i just pop it underneath my eyes a little bit on my nose, a little bit on the center of my forehead, my chin, my cupid's bow, and around my nose. I like to use a brush. It gives me way more coverage. It's not absorbing any product. So once again, I'm using the same techniques as I would with a foundation. I'm just pressing it in. I'm not swiping. I am not buffing. I'm literally just pressing it into my skin. That is what the concealer looks like on. I don't put concealer on my lids just because I go in with a product that I'll be showing you in a moment. But yeah, this is what the concealer looks like. So for cream contour, I use the NYX Can't Stop Own Stop Concealer. And this is in the shade Mahogany. Now this is perfect for me when I'm tanned. If I had pale skin, I would not be using this as cream contour just because it's quite dark. If you would like to see an everyday makeup tutorial for when I'm pale, let me know and I can do that for you. Because I use very different products when I'm pale versus when I am 
tanned. So as you can see, I've just placed it on my forehead, on my cheeks, on my nose and on my chin. I don't do my jawline because sometimes it can look like I haven't blended my foundation in very well. So I like to keep it there. And as you can see, I've only used the tiniest, tiniest amounts. And to blend it in, I'm going to go in with an angled brush. This is the Blank Canvas F84. The reason I go in with an angled brush is because when I'm doing my cheeks, I can really get the angle on it. What I do with this, again, like every other cream product, I just press it into my skin. Now, this product is kind of hit or miss with how much you put on. You kind of have to just eyeball it. I try and go for very little amounts because as you can see, it is quite pigmented. So for my cheeks, I just press it in and I try and bring it upwards just because it lifts the face more and you're not left with, you know, sagging cheeks or it looking muddy. So I just press it in and like I said before, it is so easy to work with. You just press it all in and it looks flawless. And I do the same for my nose, I just press it in. The same for my chin, I kind of drag it on my chin. I try and keep it to like this section here because again, I don't want it to look like I have not blended my foundation. So next is a new product that I have added into my everyday makeup routine and I'm so, so, so happy I have. I tried this maybe two weeks ago and since then I have been obsessed. I have been using the P. Louise base as a cream blush and this is in the shade Winter Rose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop literally the tiny, like that's way too much. And I'm going to take a stippling brush and I'm just going to dab into it and try and get as little product on this as possible and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to start stamping it onto my cheeks when it looks like this i will then go in with my foundation brush to blend it out so because i'm using my foundation brush it's just going to sheer it out and melt it into the skin and make it look less harsh so next is powder and there have been two powders that I've gone between this year. The first one is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder in the shade Sugar Cookie. And then the other one is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. So for today, I'm going to go in with the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. So some people either love or hate this technique. It all depends on yourself but I like to take a brush this is just a fluffy brush it is quite dense and I like to pack powder on that way now I don't bake because I feel like with dry skin it just dries out your skin even more and you're just wasting powder because when you're putting it on and you're letting it sit you're then wiping it away and it's not going into your skin so again you are just wasting product you are not getting the most amount out of your product that you could so what I do is I get my concealer brush and I blend out the concealer again in case it is creased and then I get my fluffy brush I dip into the Laura Mercier powder I pick up small amounts at a time I don't want any large amounts of powder on my skin because that's when it starts getting cakey so I'm just going to do the same to the other eye now I am just patting out my concealer and then going in with a small amount of powder so then for the rest of my face i just take a really big fluffy brush this one is kind of dense but honestly it does not matter you can use a less dense one a more dense one a smaller one a bigger one it's up to you so like the technique that i used with the fluffy brush for underneath my eyes and my t-zone i'm just going to press it into my skin so just like the foundation the reason i am tapping into my skin and pressing it into my skin is that it's going to make it last longer and it's going to make sure that it isn't just sitting on top of your skin because that's when cakiness and creasing starts happening is when you haven't pressed the products into your skin. Even though we have set our face with a matte translucent powder, the glow is still coming through because of the products that we've used underneath our skin and that is what's going to make your makeup look either glowy or more matte or more hydrated or more dry. 
So that's what I mean by skin prep. The skin prep underneath your makeup is what's gonna make your makeup look the best. So next I'm gonna go in with bronzer and this is the only bronzer that I will ever use. It is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. Now I have two shades that I use. I've Give Me Sun and I have this shade here, which is dark. I'm gonna go in with dark today. The reason I love the Mineralized Skin Finishes is because they are a baked formula. Now a baked formula is gonna go on smoother. It's gonna go on lighter. It's going to be more buildable. I you're not gonna have to do as much blending. So what I like to do is I like to press and buff at the same time. So I'll press it in first and then I will kind of like sweep. So then for my cheeks, it's the exact same. I like to press it in and then I will start sweeping it. And then I just sweep it underneath here just to set that cream contour. It doesn't actually matter where that goes. And then for my nose, again, because I don't contour my nose, I'm just like to give it an overall bronze literally just sweep it now as i said before i don't use powder blushes just because i have not found one that i like so i'm going to skip that part and go straight into highlighter and the new highlighter that i absolutely am obsessed with is the illa masca beyond powder highlighter in the shade omg i like to take this on just a fluffy brush and just sweep it all over my cheeks but i'll show you how i do that so I just use a fluffy brush like this. This is the blank canvas F28. And I just dip into it as much or as little as I like. The great thing about this powder is it doesn't give any kickback whatsoever. So you're not left with a load of powder around the outside, which I love. And then I also just pop it on my forehead just to give it a bit of a glow. So for my nose and my lips, I use this brush here. It is a Zoeva 238 Lux Precise Shader Brush. And I just take it and I do the tip of my nose. So whether I'm doing an eye look or whether I decide to just have mascara on, I will always, always, always use the P. Louise Base to carve out my brows and do my eyelids. So to pop the P. Louise base onto my eyes, I just use a flat domed brush. It's not domed, what would you call it? What did she call it? She doesn't call it anything. It's just a flat brush. I'm just gonna go in with this P. Louise base and carve out my brows and prep my eyelids. So now that is the P. Louise base popped on. I am now quickly just gonna do an eyeshadow look that will be up on sunday the eyeshadow look will be up on sunday so i'm going to quickly go do that and then i'll be back to you guys so guys i am back so i've just completed this eye look here you will have to wait for sunday's video to see what palette i am using but i just want to let you know as well i also popped on some mascara so this is the mascara that i always use since i've gotten this i've not used a different mascara this is the Too Faced better than sex mascara I used to use the Charlotte Tilbury one, but that one kind of just wasn't doing it for me. So I switched to this one after Nicole got it for me for Christmas. And since then, I have not gone back to that Charlotte Tilbury one. That Charlotte Tilbury mascara is actually now in the bin. So moving on to lips, I have got quite a few lip products to show you guys because I do mix and match my lip products quite often. So I use two lip liners. One's a more of a brownie shade and one's a more of a pinky shade. They are both nude liners though so it is just depending on the eye look that i'm wearing or depending on the mood that i am in the first liner that i use is mac liner in the shade subculture this is more of a pinky liner it shows up way more pink than the next one that i am going to show you sorry about all the makeup on my hands it's kind of gross isn't it and then the other liner that I use is the Morphe liner in Sweet Tea. So honestly, it just depends on the eye look and the makeup look that I'm going for. In today's video, I'm going to be using the Morphe one in the shade Sweet Tea. What I do for liner is I line underneath my lip just because I kind of like to change the shape of my lips a little bit when I'm using makeup instead of getting lip fitter. Um, so I will line underneath my lip here and then for the top I follow my natural cupid's bow but I go a little bit higher so for lipstick just like liner I have three different lipsticks that I like to choose from all depending on again 
the type of eye look that I have on and what colour I would like my lips to be. The first one is, no surprise, it is MAC Honey Love. A lot of people like to use Velvet Teddy, but I find Velvet Teddy a bit too pink for me at times so honey love is a little bit of a lighter pink then the next lipstick which is more of a brownie tone nude is the p louise lipstick and this is in the shade heights this lipstick is more of a brownie nude compared to mac honey love and then last but not least this one is quite new to me it is the charlotte tilbury lipstick in the shade very victoria this I think I said in my last video or the video before that is very similar to MAC Velvet Teddy however it is a little bit more hydrating so that is very Victoria there. So for today's look I think I'm going to go in with the P. Louise lip in the shade Heights. Now I usually don't like to leave my lips matte just because I do have quite dry lips so I will usually go in with either a lip gloss or a lip oil. So for today I'm going to be using the Morphe gloss just because I do have more of a brownie lip on me today. So for my final step of my everyday makeup routine I go between two setting sprays. You will have seen me use these all the time. They're kind of the only two that I use. So the two that I usually go between are the Morphe Luminous Setting Spray. This is such a glowy setting spray and it makes your makeup last so so long. However, if I want my makeup to last, I will use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray and it claims to make your makeup last for 16 hours with no melting, no fading and no creasing. This setting spray has been the only product ever that has made me not crease full stop. So this one doesn't really make your makeup more glowy but this one does and I can't tell what one I want today. Actually, do you know what? We're going to put them both. So I'm going to go in with the Charlotte Tilbury one first. So as you can see, it has not added any more luminosity to my skin, but it has set my makeup on my makeup. It looks so flawless. Like honestly, I really think I've perfected my base down to a T. So now I'm going to go in with the Morphe one. This sprayer is way more attacking. So as you can see, it has kind of made my skin a little bit more glowy, a little bit more dewy. And that's exactly what I want. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Make sure you have that notification bell turned on so you get a notification every single time I upload. These are my favorite everyday makeup products. I hope this has helped anyone if you're looking to get a flawless glowy base. And remember, skin prep and skincare is what is gonna make your base look the absolute best. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you on Sunday's video. Bye.